Welcome to Draw Studio. Today we're going to learn about the bean shape, a simple and effective way to draw the figure. Let's get started. The bean is a shorthand to quickly draw the rib cage and pelvis of the figure. It takes a mass for the rib cage and a mass for the pelvis and connects them together as a unified shape. To make it a full bean shape, we need to show how one of the masses overlaps the other. When we draw the bean shape, that point of overlap can come from the rib cage or it can come from the pelvis. We simply need to change this line to show how the forms overlap. In the bean shape, we want to make the upper half of the bean a little taller than the lower half. This accounts for the proportion of the rib cage being bigger than the pelvis. With every bean, there is a squash side and a stretch side. This describes the natural bend that usually happens in the figure. By drawing a center line, you can see the position of the figure, and one bean could represent many poses by changing the position of the center line. The bean in the center line can even help with getting twisting poses. With a twisted bean, there are two points of overlap as the rib cage and pelvis twist to face in different directions. Making the center line twist helps us construct the forms inside and ensure they are in different positions. We can combine the line shape form gesture with the bean shape to create a very effective approach to drawing the figure. In the line shape stages, we started with a line for the angle of the shoulders and a center C curve that represented the bend or simplified spine of the figure, and then a line for the angle of the pelvis. From there we built a shape for the rib cage and one for the pelvis, and then attached the head and limbs. We can modify this with the bean. Start again with a line for the angle of the shoulders, but instead of a center C curve, draw an outer C curve that represents the stretch side of the bean and wrap around the bottom and side of the pelvis towards the squash side. Then finish it off with the rest of the ribcage shape. While you don't always have to follow these three steps in this exact order, it will give you a sense of the rhythm used in drawing the bean. From here you can add in the limbs and the head as simple lines, and then build form concepts on top. This gives us a more fluid shortcut to getting mass for the rib cage and pelvis and creates a structural gesture. Now let's draw some bean shaped gestures. I will start with an angle for the shoulders and then draw the stretch of the bean into the squash of the bean. A center line helps me understand the position of the body and then I get the gesture for the head and limbs. With practice, these simple bean shaped gestures will take you less than a minute. If you're still learning how to draw forms, you can use the simple sticks or flat shapes from the LSF method as a step in the process to get the cylinders. But if you're able to draw forms accurately, you can build them directly on the figure and speed up the process. The bean shape gave the torso a sense of form quickly and now I can build the box forms into the bean to give it more volume. I make sure the boxes stay solid with isometric perspective. Don't try to bend or taper your box forms. Keep them solid with isometric perspective so you can more accurately control the structure and proportion. Notice this bean starts the same way as the previous one but by changing the center line, we have turned the pose and made it a back view. Make sure to change the degree of the ellipses and make them more open when they are turning towards you to describe how the body moves in space. Box forms can be a challenge to get correct. Many students will struggle with the boxes and skip that step and go straight for the details. But the more you practice this underlying structure, the better you will be able to describe thick three-dimensional bodies and your details will look even better. On this gesture, I gave myself a straighter line on the bottom of the bean to help define the bottom of the pelvis and connect the legs more accurately, like in the LSF gesture method. I also find the proportion to the midpoint and bring that down to find where the bottom of the heel is. As I draw these gestures, I am constantly looking at my subject and analyzing angles, alignments, proportions, or the forms. 
It takes a lot of focus, but the more you do, the better your initial observations get. Over time, your gestures will be more and more accurate on your first pass. Now let's do a figure with a twisting pose. I start with a bean shape and then twist the center line and make two points of overlap. When I lay in the box forms for the rib cage and pelvis, I make sure I see the right side of the rib cage and the left side of the pelvis. This creates the twist in the body. It's very easy in a pose like this to let the rib cage and pelvis pull apart but the bean shape gives me a framework to keep them correctly aligned. The bean shape is a really effective method for capturing the complexity of the rib cage and pelvis and is a great foundation to build on top of. Nothing is easy at first, but it is worthwhile. So keep practicing and you will get better. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to go to drosh.com for more information on these topics and many more. If you want to see more videos like this, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.